Boker Tov, Seattle. Erev Tov, Naria. And welcome to Friends of Israel Around the World. My name is Wayne Firestone. I'm the Executive Director of the America Israel Friendship League. And today our Friends Indeed series continues a really uh, delightful program. We are excited to bring you a photojournalist perspective of the past and the present, maybe a little glimmer for the future with moments of hope from his world travels with headliners in the United States and in Israel in multiple fields. I'm talking about Shahar Azar, whose photos you have seen in major papers and electronic outlets, as well as at America Israel Friendship League events and on our website and in our materials. For everybody on this call, whether you're watching on Zoom or on Facebook, we'd love to know where you're calling in from. It's my favorite part of this community building exercise is to see in the chat window, people calling in from all, all sorts of different places and uh, really showing the breadth and the opportunity that we've seized upon to build community, to reach out to people and to build this sort of virtual community together. For everyone that's joining us live today, you can also feel free to send us your questions that, uh, to Shahar and uh, throughout the webcast. And we're gonna try to get in as many as we can. Shahar is a great conversationalist and I know we'll be happy to hear from you. Um, I'm seeing people from Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm seeing people from Brooklyn, New York. Um, one of my favorite callers from Kuwait, um, I can almost set my clock by him, um, it has, has uh, brought in. Modi Een will absolutely be uh, represented as, as always. So both from Israel and from around the United States and around, around the world. Um, uh, yes, Netanya, Philadelphia, uh, we're, we're thrilled to have you all with us. Um, but for everybody on Facebook, my favorite thing to say is you can share this, uh, just go to your watch party and uh, suddenly everybody who's just sort of waking up or, uh, or, 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 or deciding whether they're, they're going to be sleepless in Seattle uh, gets, gets to decide uh, who, who of their other friends can join in on this activity in real time. Um, so I want to introduce you to our special friend um, at AIFL, a colleague, Shakar Azar. Azran, um, he's a New York photographer and media advisor, has been for over 30 years. You're going to get the benefit of that, of seeing covering his coverage of major events internationally, his photographing of, of world leaders, including seven American presidents. Shahar's distinguished work worldwide as a photographer comprises diverse areas about uh, uh, our life, including political events, portraiture, professional sports, entertainment and advertising. Chakra, I think you and I were last together uh, uh, earlier this year, two times in, in Times Square at different times of the year. Once we were standing there looking up at NASDAQ and, and uh, that was a lot of fun on NASDAQ day. And then more recently, we were with uh, a group of our young leaders. I'll give a shout out to our chairs, uh, Jordan Greenblatt and Gabe Gershwitz, who brought together this phenomenal group of people. Uh, we were all together at, at, at WeWork. And I was thinking about that night and the sort of hopefulness that was in that room uh, and reading the New York Times, the Sunday New York Times this morning, I'm reading the poll that's uh, asking about three big questions. Are you exhausted? Are you angry? And are you hopeful? And as I thought about the, um, your collection of over 30 years in this lens of looking at the challenging times through a lens of hope, it, it, it reminded me of just how important this is. It's visual, we need to see it. So tell us where you are now and, and, and uh, take us on this remarkable journey of, of people and events and places that you've witnessed and, and are gonna share with us today. Uh, first, thank you so much for having me. I'll start with uh, sharing uh, the screen if you don't mind. Uh, I'm, in, uh, I'm in New Jersey right now. I'm in New Jersey and I really want to go back to my old life four months ago, uh, traveling to Europe a few times a month, traveling to Israel every three weeks. Um, that's really my, my goal is to go back to normal. If anyone know what is normal anymore, I have no idea, but I want to go back to, uh, to January and before. So thank you so much for having me today. Um, and I would like to start uh, with uh, telling you a little bit about myself. Um, I was born in Haifa in Israel. 
uh, the age of 16, 17, I went to uh, photography school. I went to Vito in Haifa. And uh, I started to work in the local newspaper. From there, uh, like any Israeli, I was proudly served the Israeli army for three years. Uh, I was, although I was a combat soldier, still I managed to work during the weekend uh, photographing only sports events. And the age of uh, 23, I was assigned by an Israeli newspaper, uh, Hadashot, back then, to be the correspondent, the photography correspondent. Back then, they used to send from, from Israel to the States uh, a reporter and a photographer. So um, I, I moved to New York um, in the early 90s. And uh, that's it. It was perfect time to move, you know, politically-wise. Um, I love to shoot politics, entertainment, and sports. And politics, remember, this is when all the negotiations start. Uh, um, and we had the prime ministers coming almost on a monthly basis. Someone from the government come to the States. So for me, it was a perfect time. It was early in the 90s when uh, I find myself photographing this image. Um, July 25th, 1994, I uh, was working uh, with R Rabin. And uh, in the photo, we can see uh, late Prime Minister Rabin, uh, King Hussein of Jordan, and uh, Bill Clinton, President uh, Clinton, in the White House signing the, um, the peace accord. Um, if I would say that will be the image for me uh, that I felt the most in my life. I knew that I'm part of history at that moment. I knew, I felt it. Uh, um, you know, we're taking pictures all the time. Uh, some of the meetings are extremely important, but it was all about these three men. And I remember years later, you know, uh, I photographed uh, uh, the president many times. And, and one day I asked him, um, actually I asked his assistant to ask the president if it's okay, if he can sign, autograph this uh, uh, photo for me. So uh, he took the photo in, 10 minutes later, he come out without a photo and he, he, he told me, well, the president actually would like to see you. I said, okay, that's cool. So I'm going in and the president said, hi, I'm Bill. I say, hello, Mr. President, I'm Shahar, pleasure to meet you. You took this photo, great, he wrote great photo. And then I remember uh, he put his hand on my shoulder and said, you know, that was one of the best days of my life. And I miss this man so much. And for me, I was, you know, I was so proud to be there. And later he called Hillary and the people over there and they all were talking about the photo. I, to be honest, I have no idea what he said after that, but um, it was a very, 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 very special moment for me. So I worked, uh, as you mentioned, with seven American presidents. Uh, in 2012, I found myself covering uh, 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 Barack Obama's campaign. And uh, this picture, I took at the Apollo Theater. It's my second home. We'll talk about the Apollo very soon. But uh, I remember the, the president uh, backstage, uh, he saw Al Green performing. And he told his advisor, you know, I'm going to sing Al Green right now. And his advisor hold his, hand, his head and said, Mr. President, please, election time. Do not do it. Of course, Obama go on stage in Harlem and seeing Al Green and saying Al Green. That was a, a wonderful, wonderful moment. And this photo actually appeared, um, it was part of the campaign. Uh, you could see it in Rolling Stone magazine, many magazines use, uh, use that image. Um, in the 90s, again, we have many, many visits uh, from uh, dignitaries from Israel. Um, it's all about the private moments. Um, Prime Minister Netanyahu with uh, um, Mrs. Netanyahu going to uh, watch a baseball game in Center Park. The kids want to go to the park. So if you count, there are 14 guards around them and this is how they watch uh, the, uh, um, the, the game. By the way, the photo, um, as far as I know, is still on their private residence wall. Uh, it's still there. And uh, it's really a moment that for me to be with the prime minister and his kids in such a, a personal family moment, it was a, a really, really priceless. Uh, um, one thing that, that I learned with uh, my photography that we, we, we're talking about trust. Um, when you travel back then, uh, Shimon Peres was the foreign minister. He's visiting New York 
and President Bush talking about, speaking about the Iraq war. So before the event, he's going to his room to watch the speech. For me as a photographer, the main thing is to be almost like a fly on the wall. Yes, I want to be over there, but I cannot click until the right moment. And as soon as the president starts to speak, Foreign Minister Perez turn around and for the rest of the speech, this is how he said, like that. And it was a very, very special uh, uh, moment for me. And, and I got it because the, the team really trusted me that, that you know, I will not interfere uh, with the moment. And it will, it will bring me to the, to the entertainment part of my, uh, my career, which, which I love, is those quiet moments with, with celebrities. Uh, Paul McCartney um, in, um, one second, here we go. Uh, Paul McCartney, Steinway Pianos in New York. It's a private event and I'm acting as, as his photographer. And the same thing, you know, you go, you go to the room, you check each and every piano, you know, like you check which one you want to play today. And again, those moments, he knows that I'm in the room. He sees a camera, he sees me, he say hi, but that's it. You just let him do his job. And the event was such a special evening. The event was uh, Barry Gordy on the right side, a very, very, very special man. Barry Gordy is from uh, Motown, Motown Records. And today there is a Motown Museum in Detroit. Paul McCartney went for a visit and he saw the piano that we see in the back. It's a piano that Jackson 5, uh, James Brown, Sammy Davis Jr., uh, Otis Williams' Temptation, they all play on this piano and Paul McCartney asked to play on this piano. Barry Gordy said, well, doesn't work. Paul McCartney got into his car and said, you know what, I'm going to restore this piano. Uh, Ten months later, and I think $700,000 later, uh, this piano was restored and they did a very small event with about 60, 70 people at the Steinway uh, uh, in New York and I was uh, the photographer. Uh, you, if you will see Paul McCartney's face, for him, Barry Gordy is what Paul McCartney is for us. Uh, the Beatles and second record, you will find Barry Gordy song in their record. So it was a very, very special moment for all of us and for Paul McCartney. And I found out about it the day after when uh, Paul McCartney tweeted this photo and he was kind enough uh, to give me a very, very, very nice credit. Um, one more photo that I would like to share with you on the entertainment you know, world is uh, I traveled with Muhammad Ali, he promoted uh, his daughter's book and he did a surprise, surprise visit, uh, the Soprano set. Uh, on the right side, we see James Godofini. Uh, this is the last episode. Uh, they're filming the last ep episode of the, the Sopranos. So the funny thing about uh, this picture, uh, as soon as, you know, Godofini really he had tears in his eyes, he, really. He, 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 didn't believe that Muhammad Ali is on the set. So um, he took like a piece of paper and, he, and he, he wrote his email and he said, would you mind to send me this email, uh, this photo? So of course I have no problem. And, and I told him, you know, we were joking that uh, he's a celebrity. He said, no, no, I'm a celebrity, he's a legend. And this is something that I learned le later, the difference between a celebrity and a legend. So I'm going back to my studio and I see like 20 missed calls from HBO. And I said like, guys, what's going on? I called him. Um, the photos are mine, you know, we're talking about rights. No, 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 no. Do you have the piece of paper that Mr. Galdofini gave you? I say, yeah. Well, he actually took the last page of the script of The Soprano and gave me the email <laughs> and signed, put his email address. So that was pretty cool. Of course, I gave him back. I didn't know, uh, uh, um, you know, I didn't look at the, the page, but it was funny. And it's, it, it, for me, to see a celebrity next to a legend, that really it's for me, this is when I understood the difference between, uh, between them. Uh, so I photographed also some sports events. Um, uh, this is an ad that I did for, uh, uh, for a sports company uh, with Messi. Um, I photographed uh, um, the US Open, um, many, uh, you know, many of them. But for me, uh, being Israeli and being Jewish, 
Uh, the most important events for me is those delegations that I travel with to Auschwitz. Uh, three, four times a year, I find myself in Auschwitz-Birkenau with different uh, delegation. If it's uh, uh, FIDF or World Jewish Congress or Chelsea Football Club, which they're fighting anti-Semitism uh, dearly. Um, I find myself in Auschwitz and here with uh, Steven Spielberg, uh, I think it was the 70th anniversary of the liberation. And I just want to mention one thing. If you're planning to visit Auschwitz, try to do it during the winter. Such a different experience. Even during the winter, you try to understand, you try to feel, you cannot. But it's a whole different experience when you travel uh, uh, um, during the winter to the, uh, to the camps. So as a New Yorker, I would like, well, New Jersey, but still, uh, I'll call myself, I still, you know, call myself New Yorker, that's a different story. Um, I want to talk about a little bit about the difference between, I was here in, uh, in uh, 2001, in 9-11. And um, I would like to talk about the difference between then and today. Uh, in 9-11, in we really thought it's the end of the world. Um, I was in Queens, I was in a, in a photo shoot in Queens and uh, someone said, oh, you know, something happened at the World Trade Center, I'm going to the roof with, uh, with my assistant and being Israeli, within seconds, I understood that this is a, this is a terror attack. This is not a small airplane who got uh, to the building. And people around me didn't really didn't understand what's going on. Although 10 years earlier, it was another attack on the World Trade Center, but still people uh, um, didn't get it. And this is one of the pictures that sum up for me, the American experience, you know, they continue with normal life that day. They didn't get what's going on less than two miles away from them. So the city uh, was really divided below 14th Street and uh, above 14th Street. Uh, yes, we could smell the, you know, the, the smoke, although we're the Upper West Side, I could still smell the smoke but really the city was divided. Uh, and slowly it took us weeks to understand that this is a US incident, this is a New York incident, this is a local event. This is not an international event. And uh, I think within a year, everything went back to normal, but um, really it was uh, uh, um, a, lo a local, local, local event. Um, so yeah, photograph, um, I have very harsh photos that I'm not planning to share with you all, but um, it will bring me to today. Today it's different. This is mid-March, 7 p.m., Grand Central in New York. Anyone who came, who visited New York, know that this is crazy. The place was empty and and, I'm going with my camera and I see the same frame every day. Uh, um, the city, the city just stopped. Look at Times Square, empty. Times Square is empty. Um, you know, this is 5 p.m., 6 p.m. Uh, March in Times Square. And this is, this is, this is really, uh, 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 my concern about about New York right now that we don't know uh, uh, where where we're going. Um, the, the bright side is uh, every night 7 p.m. We all know that 7 p.m. Um, we all gonna thank, we're all thanking the the, the healthcare personnel and uh, uh, this is outside uh, this picture I took. Uh, look at her eyes. This is a nurse, uh, Lenox Hill Hospital, Upper East Side, um, 7 p.m. Every night, people, hundreds of people gathered and clapping and thanking uh, uh, um, the doctors, thanking the, uh, um, the, the, the frontline uh, uh, workers. Um, I try right now with my camera 
to um, to try to capture some normal life. So I went to Washington Park, you know, people, uh, people playing chase, actually normal. What is normal today? You know, uh, um, I went to the train to take some pictures on the train. The train is empty, but still people are trying. They're trying to, to, to move forward. You know, um, Trader Joe's, you know, and while we're photographing those normal life, I found myself uh, going up to Harlem, to my, to my second home, to the Apollo. And uh, the last crisis that we have, we still have it, you know, it was the George Floyd uh, uh, incident. Um, but I want to share with you, uh, I'm optimistic, and, and I really want to share with you my experience at my second home at the Apollo. Um, it was the early, mid 90s. Uh, they called me one day and they asked me to take a picture of Tony Bennett. Okay, uh, being Israeli, I had no idea who Tony Bennett is, but that's great. So I'm going to the, you know, to the theater up in Harlem and I'm photographing Tony Bennett. Uh, since then, I'm the house photographer of the Apollo. So the great thing, and I have really endless stories and I know that we have only an hour. So I'll, I would like to share with you a few stories about the Apollo. And uh, Shahar, Shahar, yes. Shahar, let me let me ask something as I'm um, looking at your images um, coming from the different uh, thirty years. Um, the clearly it it's almost hard to know you know exactly which date or age things are until you come to pictures with people wearing masks, and um, then it's very clear it, uh, that that we're in the present tense. And I know with Apollo in particular, this has been a relationship you've had uh, for a very long time. Um, and what about the Apollo would you say is draw, draws you back uh, for inspiration during you know, a particularly difficult period that we're going through as, as everyone is going through now? Um. You know, the, 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 the bright side about the Apollo is that from the mid 90s, when I walked, and again, being Israeli, I never seen the, you know, the color of the skin. For me, it was just going to another client. And I felt the same way on the other, you know, from the other end. And the people over there really become my second family. Billy Mitchell, a guy, the historian of, of the Apollo, it is a guy that uh, his tuition was paid by James Brown. James Brown walked to the green room. You know, when people walk to the, to the Apollo, they are walking because um, they want to give back to the community. You know, when Jay-Z performed at the Apollo or Alicia Keys or uh, um, Aretha, anyone played the Apollo, it's only 1,500 seats. They don't need to play the Apollo. If Jay-Z want to perform, he can do five nights at Madison Square Garden and have 80,000 people, and that's it. He doesn't need those. But this place, everything become different. And you know, it's um, with Aretha, for, for example, we had the, the, the event that a day before she came, of course, you're getting all this uh, um, a conversation with, with her PR people, marketing, well, tomorrow Aretha is coming, you know, don't talk to her, don't do this, don't do it. Like, Everybody's scared to death, you know, the diva is coming. And we're back in the green room. And of course, you know, she always asks, where are you from? Israel, by the way, this is the magic word. I love Israel. This is great. When you say Israel, everybody has something to say. Um, and she said, oh, that's great. But well, and she said, you know, um, I remember that I have my picture on the wall over here. At, uh, there's a mural at the, the lobby. I said, yeah, yeah, it's still there. And she said, can you? Can you show it to me? So, of course. So I found myself uh, walking at the Apollo Theater, Aretha holding my hand, and we got into the, the mural. So of course she made fun how skinny she was and compared to today, blah, blah, blah. And she picked up her pink camera, video camera, and started to film all of us. So that's what, you know, that was a very special uh, uh, moment for me at the Apollo. But, but this is the Apollo, you know, it's uh, uh, Mariah Carey giving an award to Petty LaBelle. And then 
Prince stole by when he said hi, and he's giving the award. A really crazy time at the Apollo. The same with uh, uh, Bob Dylan performing at the Apollo. You know, you never know who is going to stop at this at this house. But uh, I saw the community. We spoke about the community. I saw forty thousand people waiting online one morning to be at James Brown funeral. Forty thousand people, nine hours. I won't. I was on stage with James Brown. I, I didn't sing, nothing, you know, but I was on stage with James Brown at the Apollo for nine hours. 40,000 people walk. The line was up to 135th Street. And this was a very, very special day because they they wanted the community to say thank you to James Brown. So it, it was a very, very, very hard, you know, days for us. Um, I will tell you something new about uh, two years ago when, when Black Panther, the movie came out. So um, the cast of Black Panther, they had a discussion at the Apollo, the whole community. And by the way, many, many of those events are free. Okay. Uh, um, and so I asked the cast, you know what? Maybe at the end, of the, uh, the end of the discussion, let's move all the furniture, turn to me, do the Wakanda and we'll ask the whole audience to do it. So they did it, it was great. We edited the pictures together, you know, and the day after, everybody picked this image. And The Atlantic uh, magazine picked it as picture of the year in 2018. So that was a very, very, very special moment for me photography-wise. But I will sum up the, the, the Apollo with my favorite person over there. And it's uh, Stevie Wonder. Uh, I photographed him many, many times at The Apollo. Um, and only the Apollo, you can find yourself 3 a.m. after party in Harlem, going photographing the DJ and hear Stevie Wonder take the mic and start to, to play music and Spike Lee uh, uh, videotape him, like uh, taping him and uh, Dougie, uh, Dougie Fresh in the back. Crazy moments that you really can find only the Apollo. Uh, but I wanna talk about this moment. Uh, this picture is a regular photo, really. It's nothing about photography right now. It's about Stevie Wonder and Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett was the first person who gave the stage to a black person, to Stevie Wonder uh, um, in the 60s. He said that he will perform with me regardless. And he gave the, the award to Stevie Wonder that night. And Stevie Wonder told him, and, and, and I'll call as much as I never see the color of his skin, I'm able to feel the color of his spirit. And you know what? That's for me really some of the, the Apollo. Really, it's, it's, I, I understand that the, the images during those shows, the images with, with Stevie, uh, I realized the, the power that I have with my lens, the, the, the power that, you know, uh, um, the, the privilege that I have to cover those stories. And, and, and to convey those, uh, those messages. Jahar, we have a, a question that came in about um, essentially uh, uh, the influences on your uh, photographic uh, style and, and uh, approach. Actually, Joseph from Queens was asking about a particular photojournalist uh, in Tel Aviv, Rudy Weisenstein. He was wondering if you were familiar with his work. And I was wondering, given your, your global travels, um, you know, who, who has influenced you the most? What, uh, there was an earlier question about why you even chose to, to study photojournalism and, and go to photo school. Can you tell us a little bit about those decisions and then we could see how that might have impacted on your work over time? Um, hi, of uh, Queens. Um, so first, like all photographers, we, we start as journalists with Kappa. That will be the first photographer that, that we all, you know, uh, looking at. But um, when you mention an Israeli photographer, I have to say the artists, photographers from Israel, really are the top photographers in the world, really. Uh, um, um, there are endless names. I don't want to start to rename them, but really endless names of great photographers who come from Israel. And you see the material that's come from, from, from Israel and you see them around the world. You always look at the name and you recognize the last name, if it's Sinai or it's uh, any other name, you know, you will find you recognize. So I'm very proud to be uh, a part of this group. And um, 
I would say, you know, it changed today. Uh, I don't have one person that I will say, this is the guy that I follow. Uh, because one thing about being an Israeli photographer, you photograph everything. Over here in the States, you know, you have a photographer who is specialized in sports and that's it. Over here, you have a photographer who is specialized in news. In Israel, if we like it or not, we do everything. You can start with, you know, a fashion show in the morning, then a funeral, then a sports event. then uh, So we photograph everything. So that's the advantage that we have uh, uh, being an Israeli uh, uh, photographer. Well, that, that, that advantage may, may uh, become a necessity in this current period for, for a lot of other photographers. But even in, in looking at this shot on the screen uh, with these two iconic figures, uh, uh, this is really about framing. It's not about understanding entertainment per se. Uh, obviously, these are uh, there are two icons, but there's a third person there. Um, you've captured something else. Can you tell us about you know like from working in different uh, disciplines in the way you have in different uh, subject matters and different parts of the world? What what your approach to framing is? Um. We are, we are the first editors when, uh, you know what, Let, let's go to the, the, the George Floyd, uh, what's going on right now in America. So there are, you know, I'm the first editor, I'm the editor on site, meaning there are, uh, I can shoot riots, I can shoot uh, a, quiet, um, a quiet demonstration protest, and whatever I'm sending to my editor, that's what he has to play with. So right now, this is in Tenafly, New Jersey. Uh, this is a protest, Black Lives Matter. And you see the little girl getting water from the police officer. So tomorrow, when you're going to read the paper, and this picture will be, so you will feel, OK, look, it's a quiet. And that's what they did, by the way, in Tenafly. Very quiet protest. You know, uh, uh, they sent the messages. They were speaking. They were, um, it was really, really interesting. Uh, but the very same time I could show you right now, 10 pictures of riots breaking, you will feel different about it. And it's bringing me to something that for me is very important, is anti-Semitism. We all know that anti-Semitism is on the rise. And here, here is where my, uh, my role get in. I was in JFK a few weeks ago and I photographed a loud flight very happy to see, by the way, a lot of, a lot of flying again to Israel. You know, 70% uh, of the you know, passenger were uh, Orthodox Jews. Now, to be honest, between us, 50% were with mask, 50% 50 with, 50 without mask. So my question is, which picture should I show? With or without the masks? And you know, one more than that, if I need to submit 10 images to my agency, what I'm going to submit? The one with a mask or the one without a mask? And we know exactly if this picture will be tomorrow in one of the papers, we know exactly what's going to happen to anti-Semitism. And this is my responsibility as an as a Israeli, as a Jew, Really, yeah, this is my opinion, it's fine. You know, uh, the writer write whatever he wants and, and I could take, by the way, it could be only one person without a mask. But if I took his picture, that's what my editor is gonna see. So this is a, 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 a significant lesson that uh, I learned through the years through my, my photography. Uh, uh, but in the last few years, you know, I visited Brooklyn so many times, you know, uh, Borough Park, uh, 770. And there is one photo that um, I always show to people. And it's this photo. You can see this image every day in Brooklyn. We live together. We have, we do business together. We laugh together. But you will not see this picture in the magazine. You will not see this picture in the, in the newspaper. People don't care about those images. But for me, this is the highlights of, of Brooklyn for me. Uh, uh, to see this uh, middle guy is named Michael walking with uh, two uh, Orthodox guys in Brooklyn. Um, for me personally, I love this photo and I love this moment. Uh, 
I cannot hear you, Wayne. Sorry, I was oh, going to say, uh, um, I'm, I, you know, we, we, we just got a great question from a mutual friend, Arthur Stark, um, who is a big fan of yours and has seen your work for, for many years and in, 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 in different uh, places. But he, he's asking in, in, uh, uh, a provocative question. With all these famous iconical people that you've been with and, and, and photographed, um, who do you hope to photograph in the future? Who haven't you um, photographed yet that you'd like to capture at a particular um, uh, moment in order to uh, uh, you know, bring something new to your, your uh, portfolio? Uh, beside these two uh, beautiful grandchildren, uh, yeah. let me think. Um, wow. That's I, I knew I knew I shouldn't invite him to this uh, call. I knew, <laughs> um, you know, fascinating for me is the Pope to travel with the Pope to understand. Uh, and I photographed him a few times, but never one on one. And for me to be with the Pope um, is someone today that trying to bring people together and to understand how a person has so much power, you know. And yes, you can do good things with the power. And for me is really to spend a, a week with the Pope will be fascinating as a, as a, as a photographer, you know. And, uh, and I, but I know you've done that. You, you've, you've shared with me some projects that you've worked on that have captured the, uh, which you would think of almost as a, a little story in Israel that might make it into the Hebrew press. And yet you've turned that now into major exhibits at, at places that aren't, necessarily known to be as friendly to, uh, to little towns in Israel. Yeah, you know, it, it's, it's very hard for us to, to get some good news, uh, uh, to publish good news. There are lots of good news from Israel, to publish good news from Israel. So um, you're talking about the project that I did uh, uh, with, uh, back then, uh, Robert Zinger and uh, Sonia Gomez de Mesquita uh, from the World Jewish Congress. Uh, they came to me and they said, look, uh, something happened at the UN. They, you know, they're giving the, the, the floor uh, for six months to uh, different uh, countries um, to present some images. And the Palestinians put images of, uh, they display images of babies that Israeli killed during the last war. So first you look at the images, some babies are from Turkey, some images not from, you know, nothing to do with war, some babies just died in them. Anyway, so the father complained and they took the, um, they took the exhibit down and they told him, look, you have the floor, go ahead, come in a year with another exhibit about Israel. So we really could, could take it, you know, both places. We could take it to, hey, let's, publish all the damage that the Palestinian did with their, you know, but uh, they came with a great idea. They came with the idea, um, there is an organization called Sasa Satan in Israel, uh, Kavor, and uh, um, what they did uh, in Israel, uh, like everywhere in the world, there's a mandatory education law for uh, uh, um, for all kids. So if you are, you know, if you are 10 years old, you have to go to school. Um, so we did an exhibit that what they do in the hospitals, they build over 40 schools in Israeli hospitals to educate the kids. So you have schooling in the hospitals. And what's beautiful about it, and by the way, this is uh, already the end, this is the exhibit that uh, we started with Geneva, UNESCO went to Paris and then ended in New York, uh, the UN. Uh, it's exhibit that you will see there is no Israeli flag over there. There is no anything that mentioned Israel really big. Uh, this is the, the Human Rights Committee across from the cafeteria, so people crossing. When you get closer to the photos, you know, yes, it says on the bottom, Israel, Beersheba, Nauria, whatever. But the challenge is, in Israel that, uh, and this is what make our country great, that you have uh, Russian and Ethiopian and, and Muslims and Christians and Jewish, and you have everything in Israel. 
So they needed to provide education in all languages. So we thought about the, the diversity. This is what we're going to show to the to the world. What Israel do, regardless if you are Jewish or Muslim, or uh, over here, this picture. This is for me a very strong image because two Palestinians girl from Gaza, Malik and Yusuf, unfortunately, one of them, she's not with us anymore, uh, cancer. Four months in the hospital, okay? They are in Beersheba. And this schooling every day, you know, they were there, they were the happiest girls ever. So, you know, I need to ask, a, I need to ask the parents for, for a release. And I was a little bit, to be honest, I was a little bit worried asking the mom for a release. Uh, I, I would say less than 30 seconds. She was happy to sign anything that you need. And I was, this is when I'm really, really proud of, of my country. You will see the kids, you don't see the difference between the kids. And, and when, you, when you put it at a, uh, you place it in, in, uh, uh, in, in, in Geneva, and you see the, the ambassador of Iraq walking by, you say, oh, those great images. Where is this, Israel? Oh, they're doing great thing. And I said, well, can you say it a little bit louder? He said, no, 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 no. And he ran away. But still, he saw it. And they know, you know, we had ambassador, we had so many people came to, came to, the, to, the, to the opening. And uh, it was really, really, really a great way to show, uh, um, um, to, to show, to show Israel. Um, you see, this is an image you can see only in Israeli hospital. And it's looked natural, you know, everything is fine, you know. Um, you know, it was important for me to show also this picture. And this picture has no name, uh, no location, nothing, because this is a Syrian boy. This is a Syrian boy that uh, uh, getting education in the Israeli hospital during the, is a refugee boy. Now, as of respect, I cannot take his picture because his mom, she's not with him. I cannot ask him for permission. The doctor will not give me permission. He is 15 years old, so I wasn't allowed to take a picture of his face. You know, it's very important to me to, 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 to show in those images that, that we are not taking lives, you know, we, we are saving lives, really. And uh, uh, that, that was really a very uh, uh, a special moment for me. And, and you know, uh, I'll go really quick to, to something that I photographed a few, few days ago over here about the great thing about uh, Israel and, and the re relationship that we have with the States. This is why we're here today. Um, this, is, uh, this is the JVP, the International Cyber Center in New York. So we had the riots down in Soho Everybody put like those boards, the, 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 the wood boards. So they invited artists to paint on those boards. Those boards were taken up yes, uh, before yesterday, okay? And th the place is open for business again. Those, uh, they took all out from also, they took the, 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 the boards and they're gonna do like a beautiful exhibit. They're gonna sell it, they're gonna uh, uh, donate it. But the fact that um, this hub opened for business again, uh, I went over there, people working. So this is for me really a bright side to start to see how Israeli can affect uh, uh, New York and really can affect uh, uh, the business in New York. And, and we really hope that we'll get back to normal, whatever, whatever it is. Gothar, I know, I know you've had this picture in the right place at the right time um, uh, to capture these kind of historic moments. Uh, I was reminded of that. I just got a, a, a uh, chat question from, from our Israel board chairman, the former Israeli ambassador to the United States, Dan Gillerman, um, uh, who obviously uh, was at a, a, a critical moment at the UN um, marking uh, the Holocaust Remembrance Resolution um, being passed, and I'm, yeah. I'm I'm curious as uh, you've watched at the UN um, the 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 period of both hostility and opportunity uh, that that you've seen. Are there moments? And first of all, take me back to that moment. You know, when with with uh, Ambassador Gillerman when his tenure at the United Nations and what you've seen, you know, uh, through this period. Then I, I want to come back to this photo as well. 
Uh, and and he will correct me. I think we're talking about January 27th. That's the date um, that I think that's the day, the Holocaust Day, uh, International Holocaust Day. I, you, you know, and, and I think I still have at home the stamps that they, they made that day. It was a very special day for us, but you don't know if, if this day will come real or not. If they're going to do it, is it a photo op or it's real? And I can tell you it's real. Every year, January 27 in the UN, every year, you know, they are marking that day. And it was very important, you know, and, and you talk about uh, uh, going to this Oster place. I remember uh, a Gilman talking about his uh, bully proof uh, vest, you know, when he, he go to, the, to, the, uh, to this building. But what I saw also with Gilman is when he walked, you know, when the camera is off, on the second floor, you are not allowed to use your cameras at the UN. I saw him sitting with ambassadors that I don't think I'm allowed to say on camera, laughing with them, talking to them, discussing with them. And that's exactly why we needed people like him at the UN, you know, conducting those conversations. At the end of the day, we're all people and this is what we need. And, and that's the advantage. You know, so many times we criticize the, the, you know, the UN as an organization, but people really don't understand what's going on behind the scene. And, and Gilliman, you know, uh, you couldn't walk with him a uh, hundred feet without three or four ambassadors stopping and, and starting just a 12 minutes, 27 minutes conversation. So it's, it was very hard to walk with him at the, uh, at the UN. But uh, in regard to your questions, I just want to go really quick through a few images that we were talking about a little bit of, of body language. Over here, uh, President Clinton uh, walking Ehud Barak to Camp David, he knows that the cameras are, are, he knows that we are shooting. Okay, so when he put hands on Barack, this is something to show that the, the connection between the U.S. and Israel, but also, you know, I support it. So it's very, nothing is by accident. Everything is planned in advance. But at the very same time, when you see, uh, and I think this is uh, Mr. Gilliman's home, by the way, uh, when you see uh, uh, Prime Minister Omer in a private meeting with, with uh, Ban Ki-moon, uh, um, UN Secretary General, this is a natural moment. They don't know that we are, you know, I'm the only person over there, but they didn't think about me taking pictures uh, of that moment. And also when you see a picture like that, when you see uh, 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 late Prime Minister Rabin with King Hussein, although they knew their cameras around, they couldn't care less about us. This is a real moment. This is a real, 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 real moment for us. And, and this is when I, I really understand the meaning of, of the decision. Uh, in this in this kind of uh, uh, photos. By the way, on the other side, uh, this is uh, President Bush in, at uh, Annapolis. End of the second term, you really need this photo. You really need this photo with Abu Mazen and Omer. So we look at look at the hands. They're holding hands like that, you know. And they gave us the freedom to shoot whatever we want. They walk all day. Just take our picture. They needed us. With Rabin, they couldn't care less. They knew that we are in an historical moment. Over here, they needed a press. We were traveling with them all the time. And what I learned also is something that uh, a very quick uh, 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 story with, with uh, back then, uh, uh, Foreign Minister Lieberman, and uh, uh, we are the State Department with uh, Secretary General, uh, uh, Secretary General, uh, Secretary of State, uh, uh, John Kerry talking to the press. We all know one is left wing, right wing, you know, they talk to the press, uh, they're going to the room. The day after the Israeli paper, a cold meeting between the Israeli and American uh, uh, administration. Wrong. That's what I got backstage. They're hugging each other, they're laughing. That the first thing that John Kerry asked Lieberman, how's your family, how's the career? But talk, you know, really personal moment. And they, they will tell me later that, you know, the bottom line that, you know, the, the, the bond between these two great nations, you know, are unbreakable. And this is what I learned, uh, um, um, you know, being as a photographer. You know, Ch Shahar, we already had uh, some questions on Facebook. Uh, you know, we streamed this live to Facebook as well, uh, reflecting on that picture you showed from uh, Soho um, of of the murals, and I know you're walking around all of uh, Manhattan from the UN to uh, the Apollo uptown and 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 Soho downtown. 
what images are 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 you seeing now that um, are are speaking to you most about the future and and this particular moment that we're in now? Um, I think when people are starting to take the the boards down, you see that the looting and everything was in really very specific place. People put the the, the boards; they put them not. Uh, because it's already over, they protected the, the place. And when we will start to see, and we're starting to see, we're being nice to each other right now. There are no tourists over here, it's only us right now in New York. So uh, I feel very strong when, when, when um, I went to Starbucks the other day and um, I stand online. And this is something that I like. A month ago, I didn't think that I would stay online anymore in New York City. So yes, six feet apart and everything, but you go to the park, people start to leave, you know. So that's my optimistic, you know, that those are the images that uh, um, uh, really bring light uh, to, the, to, to this uh, situation. And um, I want to say something about the, the, you know, we spoke about the, the Israel in America, you know, the relationship. and. And I want to say something about AIFL, if, if, if you don't mind. Uh, this is uh, uh, after 9-11, AFL, they have great galas. Every year we go to the plaza, back then it was the Pierre Hotel. Uh, great people are coming, you know, uh, if it's, uh, this was Mayor Bloomberg, Attorney General, uh, Kissinger, you know, uh, starting the day at uh, Wall Street, opening the bell, but every time that AIFL had a mission, a group, delegation coming from Israel, they stopped at Silverstein, the office, and they were touring the 9-11 side. And for me, uh, uh, doing those tours, and, and it's a crazy day, think about it. You open the, you open the, the, the opening bell, then you have the gala, every, took the time, to walk and and this guy is Israeli uh, Michael Arad is the one who de designed the uh, uh, the 9/11 memorial and this is for me means everything with AIFL and and uh, you know when Ariel Sharon came after the after 9/11 he went to Washington and he straight came to the gala uh, to AIFL gala. And he spoke about the bond between Israel and, uh, um, and the U.S. And um, I couldn't be prouder to go with him as he was the first international leader to visit the 9-11 site with the mayor. He's the first one who visited and if we talk about body language in Israel, you cannot educate them on body language. They do whatever they want. But look what happened over here. It's, it's, not, it's nothing to do with Sharon or with Giuliani. It's Israel and America over here. We are here with you. We support you. And I felt this is another image that I can tell you that I felt. And to be honest, I felt it more when I edited the images. Look at Giuliani's face. Look at Sharon's face. This is real. And this is what's beautiful about uh, our relationship. You're quiet again. I'm back. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sorry. We had some, uh, there, were, there was some noise in the background trying to avoid. Um, Shahar, where do we go from, from, from here? We, we've, you know, you've, you've covered, um, uh, you know, a, a, 30 years, you've seen adversity, you've seen tragedy, you've seen um, uh, New York and um, uh, places in Israel at real low moments, and yet uh, the, 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 the framing that you chose uh, for this uh, overview today at this moment and after touring Soho and, and, and uh, around Manhattan, uh, seeing people on empty streets, uh, New Yorkers doing what they do, riding on skateboards, riding, uh, uh, creating art in, in, in bleak places, 
Um, you know, where, 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 where do you see us at this moment? What, what are the pictures? What are the, the, the moments that are standing out to you? Um, you know, the first few, the first next, the, the next few months, we really have no idea what's going to happen, but we all know that we're going to go back to whatever it's going to be normal there very soon. Um, the uh, travel, traveling will be different. Uh, I was in Israel three weeks ago, um, 12 hours with a mask, you know, wasn't easy, but it was worth every minute. You, you're in Israel, you're with your kids, uh, um, two weeks of quarantine, um, but it's going to be over. It's going to be over. We will travel differently, but we will travel. After 9-11, we thought that's it. We could, who is going to stop us at the airport for three hours before a flight? It's not going to happen. And look, it happened and everything was fine. And, and we're going to get educated, you know, how to deal with it. But we will deal with it, you know, and we are very lucky to be part of, of, of America and part of Israel. Because, you know, I, I don't want to be, you know, someone asked me, you know, hey, why you're not going on vacation? I said, guys, if something happened to me, there are two countries in the world that I want to be in, if something happened to me, either in the U.S. or Israel. And I, 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 I really, I'm, I'm proud of it. I don't want to go to any other country. And I know that um, um, this is just a, a period of time that together we will we'll overcome it. Shakar, that is uh, really a, 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 a beautiful moment and a beautiful vision, particularly since you've seen so many beautiful moments over the, the course of your, your career. And I couldn't agree more with you that, that um, there's something resilient and ever uh, creating in these environments, even at the most tenuous moments that's happening. And it, it's frankly the thing that we've been exploring over the past several weeks in from people's homes and the sharing that we've seen from their experiences, whether they're yoga masters or they're Zumba masters, or they're um, uh, looking for uh, a musical moment to take them away, like the 42,000 people who tuned in to see the Israeli opera singing uh, folk songs on, on Independence Day. So we've, we've learned, we've learned uh, that people need to be, even if they're quarantined or if they have moments that they can uh, get out of their house to experience civilization, that they need the ability to connect and to be inspired. And that's what, you know, frankly, with the generosity of, of both American friends and our, our friends in Israel, or Chavirim, uh, who have, have given so much from their hearts, so much from their souls, and so much from their, their professions. We're going to continue this as long as this, you know, um, um, continues. Like you said, it, 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 it won't be a, a, a quick ending. And so in the meantime, our Friends and Deeds program will, will uh, continue every Wednesday and Sunday. This Wednesday, we have a remarkable program uh, that will focus on the uh, economic realities and, and what actually investing in Israel looks like with top companies um, looking for the day when there will be um, more stability in the markets. And the markets are already looking at what the great next investments are. Many of us know uh, one of those investments in everybody's portfolio needs to be Israel because it is one of the places that will be stable and that will uh, create opportunities for people looking for them, whether it's artistic or, or commercial. And by next weekend, we'll, you know, we're, we're, at, we're celebrating independence together. It's going to be in a new and different way. Uh, we still probably will have picnic baskets. I don't know where we'll be taking them. But if you tune in next Sunday, you will have a stream from Israel, the Israeli Philharmonic. We are just delighted to be able to share a concert from the Israeli Philharmonic and to continue this series. So everybody have a safe and inspiring week. Uh, thanks for being with us today. And, and we look forward to continuing this series. Thanks so much, Shafar. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'll give you the Wakanda. The Wakanda. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's the huge Wakanda. That's the, here we go. That's, <laughs> thank you.